Hello and welcome to our Year 10 Taster session for A-Level Law. My name's Laura, I'm one of the law teachers here at Blackpool Sixth Form. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the course, where it can lead to, and then take you through a couple of activities. Before we start, I'll just introduce you to our law team. So that's me over there on the left. We also have Peter Braddock and Heather Danyardi Sharples. Now, I realise we wouldn't have a chance for questions for this session, so I've included a couple that we often get asked about at open days. Firstly, students seem to think that law is just a subject for those who want to be in the legal profession. That is simply not true. Law will be relevant for any career that you choose in some capacity, whether that's from teaching, police, journalism, literature, even business and accountancy there will be an area of law that's relevant to you. The other myth that we often hear is that universities don't like A-level law. That's simply not true. We have lost count of the number of our students who have gone on to do law degrees. It is hundreds of them. All the Russell Group universities were involved in creating the new linear specification and they've all approved it. So universities do recognize the advantages of A-level law. So why study it? Knowing your rights is powerful. Applying what you've learned in lessons to your own life and what you're seeing in the news. The skills you develop in law will help prepare you for any academic degree. They're completely transferable. So it's not really a question of why you should take law, it's why would you not? You'll learn so much more about the world. So many topics overlap with other A-level subjects. It really does fit in well with most combinations. But in terms of the content, there are three exams that you would sit at the end of your second year. There's no coursework element involved and each exam is two hours long. They're each split into section A and section B. Section A has got a bit of the background. Um, so in paper one, we look at the legal system. So this involves the courts and the hierarchies and the appeal routes and all the people involved, like judges, juries and magistrates. In paper two, we look at lawmaking. So this is the differences between um, our sources of law. So we look at law that's made by parliament and law that's made by judges, um, as well as other bodies like local authorities that parliament have given powers to make specific laws. Paper three, we start taking a more philosophical approach. So we look at the links between law and morality and law and justice, look at the role that law plays within society and also the challenges that the law faces with advancing technology, like artificial intelligence and um, invasions of privacy. And section B is what we call the substantive law. So this is a substance of the law, the actual legal rules. So we look at three different areas of law. Paper one, we start with criminal law. Um, so we'll look at the offences against the person, starting with non-fatal, assault and battery, and work our way up to the fatal offences, murder and different types of manslaughter. We also look at property offences like theft, burglary and robbery, and all the defences that you might be able to use at trial. Now on paper two, we start considering civil law. So this is between individuals or businesses. They're suing each other. Usually it will be for compensation. They want money. Negligence you might be familiar with. Now this is suing people when their carelessness has caused you injury or damage to your property. We also look at different areas of nuisance, which tend to be disputes between neighbours. It could be that they're keeping you up all night with um, loud music. So we look at what your rights would be in that situation. We also look at the concept of vicarious liability which is when employers can be held liable for things that their employees have done wrong. In paper three, we look at contract law. Starting with the formation, this is like the essential ingredients to make that agreement legally binding. We look at the different types of contract terms and also vitiating factors. These are things that can impair the legal validity of the agreement. It could be that someone's lied to you to try and entice you into signing a contract or it could be that you signed it under duress or threat. In terms of enrichment on the course, we try and do as much as possible. So it depends who's available and what point, but we often host talks from barristers, magistrates and university lecturers. We also try and get trips in. So um, the most popular one is the London trip where we get tours around the Houses of Parliament and the Supreme Court. 
But moving on to the taster session. So we're going to have a look at some uh, concepts around sentencing. So this is from the topic of criminal courts and lay people from the legal system. So sentencing is what happens in criminal law after a trial, only when a defendant's been found guilty. There are three things a judge needs to consider before deciding the sentence. And you've got an activity on your worksheet of each one. So you can either try and complete that as we're going through the video or make some notes on the content and you can complete it afterwards. Of course, you can always pause and rewind this as many times as you need to get that information again. So we're gonna have a look at the aims of sentencing, what the factors are that might influence the chosen sentence by the judge uh, and what options they have available. We'll start with the aims. These are set out in the Criminal Justice Act. An obvious aim of sentencing is to punish the offender. So sentences should be proportionate to the seriousness of the crime. If they've committed a very serious crime, they should receive a very heavy punishment. Hence, we have life sentences for murder. If it was a petty crime, they've stolen a chocolate bar from the shop, then the sentence wouldn't be anywhere near that. It could be a small fine instead. Another aim is to protect the public. Now this is particularly important with violent offenders. We need to make sure the defendant no longer poses a risk of harm to society. We also want to prevent crime, not just from that particular offender from doing anything again, but we also want to put society off in general. So this can be done through deterrence. We make an example of that offender. We show society what will happen if they choose to break the law too. Of course, that also works on an individual level. That offender shouldn't want to commit that crime again through fear of a similar punishment. Another aim of sentencing is rehabilitation. Now this is also about reducing crime, but in a very different way. With rehabilitation, we're aiming to reform the offender so that they become a better person, they change their ways, and they don't want to commit crime anymore. Not through fear, but through genuine change. The final aim is reparation. This is about trying to make things right in material ways. So usually it's achieved through a compensation order that's made to the victim. The defendant will pay money to them to try and make up for what they've done. So another thing the judge needs to consider when deciding a sentence is the factors. Every sentence will have sentencing guidelines. It has a maximum sentence. The judge can't impose any more than this. There will also be a starting point before they consider aggravating and mitigating factors. Now, aggravating factors are circumstances around the offence that make it more serious. This will incur a harsher punishment. So it could be that the defendant used a weapon to attack the victim or that they did so as part of gang activity or if it was a racist attack or homophobic attack. These will all make the crime much worse. It's far more serious and they will get a harsher sentence as a result. But there may also be mitigating factors. These need to be weighed up. So circumstances that lessen the seriousness of the crime will result in a lighter sentence. If the defendant's shown genuine remorse, or they've cooperated fully with the police in the investigation, if it's their first offence and they're of previous good character, or if they've been provoked, these will be considered as mitigating factors and can result in a lighter sentence. The final thing a judge needs to consider is the range of sentencing options that are available. Custodial sentence are probably the most famous, this just means prison. Financial orders can also be made. We mentioned compensation orders that are paid to the victim, but they can also be paid to the court in, in the form of a fine. Community orders can have requirements attached to fit a particular defendant. So they don't have to have all of these requirements attached. It's like a pick and mix and the judge can choose what's relevant for that particular offender but it can include things like unpaid work, which used to be known as community service. It could include anger management courses or drug and alcohol rehabilitation. Curfews and electronic tagging would also come under this. There's also the option of a discharge. 
Now, there are two different kinds, absolute or conditional, but these essentially mean that there's no punishment as such. The offender will still get a criminal record, and if it's a conditional discharge, if they commit another offence within a set time frame, they'll be resentenced for the first offence. There are other options. If it's a driving offence the offender's committed, then they can receive disqualifications and have their licence taken off them. Or it could be a forfeiture order. For example, if someone's used spray paint as part of criminal damage, that paint will be taken from them. So, now that we've gone through some content, have a go at answering the sentencing questions. Remember, you can re-watch this video as many times as you like. And once you've done that, you can have a go at this interactive activity. Follow the link below and you'll be taken to some scenarios. All of the defendants have been found guilty of different offences and need to be sentenced. Have a think what you would sentence them. Thanks for joining our taster session and I really hope to see some of you here with us soon.